And it's time for your Gianna Volpe report brought to you by Village Overhead Door in South Hold, by the Duncan Inn in Jamesport, and by the Crazy Fork in Mattituck. Good morning, Gianna. What are you, what are you just moving and grooving in the chair? I don't get this. Why? Well, I'm, I'm excited. I always get excited. Oh, when you hear the theme? Yeah. Oh. And I swear to God, every time I hear the opening song, I swear they're saying, make hay. It's time to make hay, so wake up. Yeah. Because didn't Grant say that it was make haste? I don't know, but... I'm, I think it's make hay. Well, it is, it is make hay. Because you make hay in the morning. That's right. I remember writing a story about it. That, was written, that jingle was written in 1951. I think it's make hay. Because I was just listening to it just now. I, I, I don't know. I played it for like 30 years, so I don't really, you know, I've that's never just, really played it. That's what I was that's what was on my it mind sounds when cute. I was when I was moving and grooving, I was thinking, she hmm. said make hay. Which I, could have I been taken swear. a lot of ways in 1951, I guess. I don't know. It really? That's when it was made, yeah. Um so we've got Stephen Tikolsky on with us this morning. Uh like Supreme Court judge Arthur Pitts here in Riverhead. Uh Mr. Tuc- Mr. or his honor? His How do honor. I say it? His honor. His honor. Because you don't want to if you don't say his honor and you, you say before his honor him, though, right? If I'm well, you, it's your your honor. Your honor. Your honor. But if I'm but if you, speaking if, about him, his honor. His honor. His honor. But if you don't do that, when you appear before him, it's going to get ugly. Right, right, Stephen. If I appeared before you, it would get ugly. <laughs> you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> about which to worry. Right, I, I'm I'm being all pro, uh, being all proper this morning. So, uh, nothing honorable or dishonorable about me this morning. Just Stephen Tukulski. He's just uh, Stephen. Honored to be uh, with Gianna. Oh, so so you're the one. Wait so, a minute here. So, like Arthur Pitts, Stephen is also a musician when he's not on the bench. So, and we've had him play several times. Plays old country, which I love, at the Revolution Number no. Nine Variety Series, which will be again tonight at the Crazy Fork between eight and eleven. Um, we're raising money for the East End Seaport. Yeah, it was uh, it was a treat to play there. My first and only uh, visit uh, to play music on the North Fork. No, you came um, out, didn't you come and out? I'm sorry, twice? I can't be there tonight. You were kind enough to invite me, but uh, I'm going to be playing here at a couple of places on the South Fork. Yes, so tell, that's why I wanted you to come on anyway. So tell us, what are your gigs tonight? Because you've got, you've got multiple gigs. Multiple gigs. Um, so um, uh, there's been a new farmer's market uh, that started in June on Thursday nights from 5 to 8 at the Calvary Baptist Church in East Hampton. Um, and there's been uh, live music there uh, every night, every, really? every Thursday night. And so uh, I'll be playing tonight um, from 5 to 6 there with Joe Potter, um, a great local musician who uh, is in charge of the music there. And then um, at 9 o'clock, I'll be playing a 30-minute set at Union Cantina in Southampton. Uh, Very cool. Paul runs the music there. I think Uh, that's... I actually uh, was there last week sat in and played the lap steel guitar with Michael Weisskopf, who had uh, an hour set there. So, uh, yeah, so all or nothing, as it turns out. So, that is awesome. The lap steel guitar, I've always wanted to learn how to play. How long did it take you to learn to play lap steel? I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. I- I'm curious about the process of learning to play lap steel, because it's just one of the coolest instruments there is. Yeah, it's. Um, uh, I, I'll give you. A, I'll answer more than that. <clears throat> I've played the guitar since I was eight years old. Actually, I'll have to send you a picture of me when I was eight playing a guitar that was ten times my size. Um, I took lessons to learn how to play classical music till I was about twelve or so, and I was an okay guitarist. I was never a great guitarist, and I've played on and off my entire life, but have never performed in public before about a year and a half ago. Really? And, um, my mom lives in a nursing home uh, in Southampton, and Joe Potter actually would play music there. They pay performers uh, every Wednesday, quite a few performers to play. And 
my mom knew that we knew each other and said to him one time, hey, you know, my son plays the guitar, which nobody knew because I sat in my house and played by myself. So Job said, you know what, why don't you come and play and surprise your mom one time and sing a song with us? Mm. And I actually resisted for a year or so because I just, it was not something I ever thought that I could do. And uh, I did it one time and, uh, yeah, then I got the bug. So you can, uh, anyone that doesn't like the way I perform can blame uh, Job Potter uh, for getting me, getting me to do it. How cool um, is But that? I, what, what I like is really old vintage um, country music, um, Hank Williams, and even before that. And, you know, uh, all, if not most of that music, has uh, a, a pedal steel guitar on it. So, um, I actually I bought a pedal steel guitar, which uh, I'm still working at. I've never played that out in public, because it's got ten strings and three pedals and so, four knee levers, and it's you know, so both the, a mechanical the pedal and a steel instrument. Is but that then I also um, uh, bought a lap steel guitar, and through the wonders of the internet, I uh, was able to teach myself to play it well enough that I can play it in public. I'm, I'm not a virtuoso, but not many people play it, and it adds a real nice layer of sound. Oh, so absolutely. I've been so, fortunate to, to play with quite a few others uh, with it. The pedal steel is sort of like the perfect union between the guitar and the piano, I guess. Yeah, it's, I mean, for what's amazing about it is that, um, you know, you can, you, you put your bar in one place and play one chord and simply by stepping on a combination of pedals and levers, that, that chord winds up to a different chord and it's, an extremely unique sound yes um but it's it takes an hour just to set it up because you have to um you have to tune the 10 strings then you have to tune the 10 pedals wow. uh, then you have to tune the levers uh so it's uh like i say it's uh, it's musical and uh it's uh, it's a machine and um the people that play it uh you know it's just it's a lifetime of learning how to play it but hopefully by next summer i'll be out playing it in public well that certainly speaks to your musicianship alone if you can tune a pedal steel you you, should, you know a thing or two about playing the guitar i um, think it uh, since it weighs about 60 pounds i think just carrying it on yes. the stage is an accomplishment <laughs> I, I used to think that as a kid i was um second chair saxophone from i guess like third grade and that is not a, a light instrument to carry, you know, seven miles across town both ways. No, it wasn't that far, but yeah, you don't you don't want your kids to take up the tuba or the stand up bass, you know. You yeah, start with play the clarinet. Flute. Yeah, play the flute. Play the clarinet. Although no, I think it's I think it's I always think it's really exciting when I hear about a young saxophone player. I always get really excited. Yeah, there was, um, you know, there's open mic nights on Wednesday nights at MJ Dowling's in Noyak, which I frequently played. And there was, last uh, summer, there was a, a young woman who unfortunately moved back up the island, but she played the saxophone. It was very cool um, to, you know, I'll frequently play guitar with someone else that plays a guitar or the bass uh, or the harmonica, but uh, there's not a lot of people playing uh, the saxophone. And um, I play a, a lot of old really old country music is very blues oriented yes so sax saxophone fits in perfectly oh so i should pick it up again huh please that <laughs> would be a pleasure uh, and i think it's great so you've been playing out only for about a year and a half now and do you are you seeing your perform like your performance getting tighter getting better um how is the how has the evolution been for you yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, I don't get nervous about many things. Uh, I don't. I, I was a trial lawyer for many years, and I didn't get particularly nervous about that. I've been a firefighter for 30 years. I'm not particularly nervous about that. Um, but every time that I stand up and perform, um, yeah, I get uh, fairly nervous. And um, for the longest time, I, I could not bear to watch or listen to myself um, but uh, last Wednesday, the group of open mic performers from MJ's uh, performed on the green in Montauk. Uh, Ray Red is uh, the excellent oh, musician that runs that. And he had taken videos uh, from last year 
um, which I could really barely watch. And then he took him from this year. And though, while I never think I'm good, uh, I've clearly gotten a lot better. Um, I look more comfortable, and uh, I think I'm, I'm more confident. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, I think people like the stuff I play, because it is different. Um, yes. Uh, it, it, it's rare that, that I mean, a lot of times people, you know, have never heard the songs that I've done. And that, like, the best praise is when someone comes up to me and says, wow, I really like that song. I never heard it before. So, um, yeah, I think I've gotten better, which... Uh, at my age, is uh, the best that I can hope for. And Ray is is also awesome, and um, Sydney he plays a lot of, of old, well, not as old as your stuff, but um, he plays some vintage stuff too. And uh, yeah, he's he's. Uh, I'll tell you, the the, uh, the musical community out here um, oh, is unbelievable. It, it, it's large. I mean, there is a, there are a ton of extremely talented people, and uh, they are very supportive. Um, which I'm told is not always the case in other areas where people, you know, fight each other for gigs and, you know, wouldn't, you know, uh, wouldn't do anything to help a fellow musician. But that's not the case out here. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Certainly here on the uh, South Fork where I play, and uh, the the couple of times I was out to the North Fork, I met musicians there I'd never met before. It couldn't have been nicer or more welcoming. So um, it's it's been a lot of fun for me, I'll tell you. We're very, very lucky. And also, uh, Michael Rusinski, did he play on the green with you guys that day? Um, I know he... he did not. He was holding, uh, he and Ray Red actually uh, alternate uh, running uh, MJ Dallas. And of course, unfortunately, there was uh, a place here in uh, East Hampton, uh, the Harbor Grill, where on Sundays, uh, Mike Rusinski, uh, another very talented performer, ran an open mic uh, every Sunday from 3 to 6. Unfortunately, that restaurant uh, just closed. Really? So lost that venue. Oh, but no. But we still have, I, I still run uh, an acoustic jam. It was started by Joe Potter a number of years ago. But every Sunday from, uh, we've moved the time up from 4 to 6 on the porch at the Springs General Store. Um, it's an acoustic jam. Just go around the circle and uh, someone will play a song and others will join in and uh, there's some fine musicians there, and uh, we get lots of spectators to sit and listen and watch that. I would love to come and check it out someday. How how late in the season do you guys go? Because I'm trying. Uh, we go till we go till we we take our gloves off to play and then put them back on when we're not playing. <laughs> nice. uh, That's dedication. I mean, uh, uh, certainly, I think uh, we might have gone through the, the October. Uh, I'd have to look back, maybe as late as October. I'm not as uh, as, as warm-blooded as some. Um, uh, you know, starting in May sometimes is a little too cool for me, given the, the fact that we don't have much of a spring out here. But, um, yeah, I mean, we are... If, if you want to come, you let me know. And if we I, will, to, I will, I will. We, we will. You should bring your saxophone. We don't have a saxophone. That would be... We have, uh, uh, somebody will bring an accordion uh, occasionally. Um we have fiddle, a mandolin, uh, nice. but it's mostly guitars. That, nice. So if you want to see Steve play, so are you doing guitar? Where are you going to be playing lap steel at both both events tonight? No, I don't think I'll be playing lap I don't. I, I rarely play lap steel and sing. It's, it's hard enough to concentrate on doing uh, one right. thing. Um, but I, I, there are two two gigs upcoming uh, that I'll plug that I will probably be playing some laps. One is um, so the Ladies um, Village Improvement Society, they have their fair every year. That's Saturday, July 29th at the LVIS headquarters right on Main Street. And so there's going to be music from 3 to 5. I'll be playing with others um, between 3.30 and 5 o'clock and I'm sure I'll play some laps still there. And then the Saturday before that, July 26th, Second, um, the Lions Club of East Hampton is having their uh, annual chicken barbecue at the American Legion. Uh, music's going to be from two to six, and I will definitely play some lap steel with one or more friends of mine during that period of time. And there, plus two great causes to support. So, otherwise, see him tonight at the Calvary Baptist Church in East Hampton um, or Union Cantina. What what time are those before we wrap up? Yeah, the farmer's market, I'll be playing from 5 to 6. And I may, I may play a little lap steel in a couple. I'm playing with Joe Potter then. 
And then um, just guitar probably at uh, Union Cantina from 9 to 9.30. But I always have my last steel in the truck. So because people will say, hey, do you have that last thing with you? And so if they say, if I, if, if I do, yeah, I'm, uh, somebody asks, I'm glad to bring it out. Well, we'll miss you tonight at the Revolution Number 9. Much love. Take care and good luck. Um, we'll be back here on the Gianna Volpe Report, 1390 WRIV, your hometown station. An overhead door serves a purpose, and it should be as beautiful as the rest of your home or building. For more than 30 years, Village Overhead Doors has been creating and installing beautiful garage doors for contractors and homeowners on the north and south forks. They also install automatic garage door openers that open with the click of a remote, so there's no getting out of the car in bad weather. For a wide range of styles from lifetime steel doors to custom-made wood doors and for all your garage door needs, please call 765-4963 today and find out how your garage door can be a beautiful focal point of your home or building's exterior. Village Overhead Doors of South Oval, 765-4963. Make the call and let them add beauty and value to your home or business.